Hello, my friends in Monet Cafe. This is artist Susan Jenkins, and I'm going to be bringing you a little lesson today um, using something we talked about in the last lesson on punching up color. I'm going to actually use the color wheel to pick my, my palette for this little painting that I'm going to be doing. We're going to get a lot of learning in on this one, but I just thought I would say I'm so thankful that it's sunny today where I live. We've had so much rain and potential flooding since we live near a river, but um, wow, nothing like what was in Houston. My heart and prayer just goes out to all of those people suffering from that tragedy. I wanted to share too, really quickly, I've had some of you ask how to store pastels. I do have a video on that, but I thought I'd share my other little uh, technique that I use just um, in the interim. As I finish a pastel painting, it's sometimes like, okay, I don't have time to get it uh, ready and put it in my little storage system where I have them like in bags and um, just keep them stored this way with the cardboard. I've shared how to do this too. This makes it really safe and easy for people to look at if you go to an art show, um, if you ship them out. I can't get this back in here. And uh, it's just a neat, neat little storage system. So, but before I get to that stage, I just temporarily put my pieces up here on a piece of uh, like a bulletin board, like a cork board. And what I do is I just um, have little um, thumbtacks. You can actually put them on the sides of your painting so that you actually don't have to put holes in them. And uh, it's just a really safe and easy way, kind of like a, a holding area for your artwork before you go to this. So that was just a quick little art tip for some of you guys with storage. But what we're gonna do today is again, work on the color wheel um, to choose a palette. I'm gonna go grab a cup of coffee and we're gonna get started on this fun lesson. Yay. All right, time to get started. I've got my essentials here, including my coffee. <laughs> and I thought I'd just go ahead and show you a little bit. I have a lot of people ask about how to choose a color palette. And if you recall, from my last video uh, on punching up color. I don't think it was, it was like two videos ago. I talked a lot about the color wheel and how to use it. The color wheel is your friend. And um, we're going to use a uh, color palette today that utilizes this little section on the back of the color wheel that talks about a triad of colors. Um, I love things in threes, um, like the Trinity just reflected all throughout nature. Boy, I could do a whole lesson on that, but I'll stick to color. <laughs> and um, I'm going to choose, and if you turn this color wheel, you see how it changes, you know, which colors are in the little sections. But I'm going to pick a um, color family or palette based on this triad um, with the purples or the blue violets. Okay, this is going to be a little bit more of a warmer blue. Okay, um, so it's blue violets. And if you go down from the little triangle, you go over to here, we've got um, greens. Okay, these are more of a warmer green in here. And then if you go to this side of the triangle, we've got our reds, kind of orangey reds. Okay, and I chose that because I noticed, I gotta pull up my photo here again, I'll stick it up on the screen for you guys. Um, in my reference photo, I picked something that was a little bit blase. Often I will pick a photo, it doesn't have to sing and dance as far as color um, and uh, certain other elements go, but I just look for a good composition and I love this composition. I love compositions with depth and things that I can use to create that sense of illusion. Because that's what we are as artists. We're really illusionist, trying to create an illusion of making something look three-dimensional on a two-dimensional surface. And there are so many neat little techniques that you can use to accomplish that. And that's what I try to bring you guys as artists, is ways to know, oh, aha, that's what happens if I put a cooler, color and a lighter value in the distance, it makes it look far away. It's like magic, okay? It's very cool. Not dark magic, just illusionary magic. And so what I've done here is I've used the little um, triad of colors on the back, triad, triad, and I've chosen these colors. Now I've got my my blue violets, okay? And I've got, in here, I've got a little bit more of the blues because I know I have some water in this scene in the foreground. And, um, but I've got my greens, some warmer greens and a little bit of cooler greens for those things in the background. And I've got my reds with some of these uh, yellowies because I know I've got marsh grass and some of that 
hop over there, yellow, get back over there. Some of that um, tops of the grasses may be, I might even grab a little bit more orangey colors too. Okay, so I've got my little families and I've got them, hi little families, <laughs> I have way too much fun with this. And I've got them arranged as far as value, basically. Okay, I've got my darkest to the back, um, moving towards my lighter values towards the fronts. Okay, and the reason that I do this is a painting is gonna be very dull if you don't have good values in them and a good range of values. Okay, if I just did all middle values for everything in this painting, it's gonna look very flat. So you have to have your darker values for the foreground, your lighter values for the background, and that's really gonna enhance that illusion of depth in your painting. Okay, so that was my reasoning behind it. I may use this as a little bit of a harder pastel um, for some of the, I'm gonna do a quick little underpainting and I'm gonna focus kind of on complementary underpainting um, to start with. So here we go with that. Yay. All right, I have my very simple reference photo up here um, to work from, and I'm just gonna kind of sketch in the basic landscape, and then I'm gonna start working on an underpainting for that. Um, and I did choose this photo from the, um, the Paint My Photo app um, that I've talked about a lot, a great, great place to get reference photos. And um, I liked this one because it had um, a, nice, a nice composition utilizing that rule of thirds that we talk about so often. Um, and I want to try to keep this one really loose. I'm, I'm doing this one today that is going to be a part of a, um, it, it's a little challenge that we have in our Facebook group. It's, uh, I don't know who started it, but it's called uh, 30 in 30. You're to paint 30 paintings in 30 days. And um, that is just one of the best ways that you can grow as an artist and um, is just to get lots of practice and to do things fairly quickly. So that's kind of my goal here today is to do kind of a, a quick painting. My pencil's not working. Um, but I do, I do like this composition. And like I said, the photo, it may look a little lackluster with color, but um, it is, it's just got a really nice composition, and I happen to love marsh grasses. I might need to get another pencil here. I like how they, they carve their way through, through these this grasses. And um, also, too, right now what I'm seeing when I, when I draw or sketch is I see shapes. This is something I talked about in the last private lesson, is try to avoid seeing what the thing is and see what the shape is, okay? Because... Our brains want to sometimes see things and draw it the way we think it is rather than what that shape actually looks like. Now, right now, I'm kind of doing some measuring with my eyes. I'm seeing how far I, I sometimes often just look at the center point of the reference photo and then I judge everything on that. So now I know the center and then you don't have to worry about the scale. OK, the center is right about here and the bottoms of those marsh grasses are below the center. So my center is right about here and the bottom of these marsh grasses is going to be right about here again pencil challenged here okay so this is just kind of to make sure when i get going on the um, underpainting i don't have to um, focus so much i can just focus more on the values rather than the uh, the drawing or where things are now i know these grasses were here and the other grasses are going to kind of angle down this way, and they're a little lower, okay? So that's kind of my reasoning and logic there. And this is UART paper, by the way. I do love this paper, but if you've been on my channel long, you know I work with a, a lot of different surfaces, and I make my own homemade surfaces sometimes. Um, but UART is just a good, a good paper. Um, you can wet it, too, which is great. You can do a, a watercolor underpainting. You can do a thinned out oil painting, actually. I haven't done one of those in my video, but I need to. Okay, so you see now we've got a general composition. We've got our sky that's gonna be absolutely the lightest value and that you can see right away. Um, we've got our background trees um, that are gonna be very loose because they're far away. You can see in the reference image, you know your brain knows their tree, but I don't have to draw any leaves on that. You wouldn't see the leaves that far away anyway. We've got our big marshy area. We've got this um, waterway carving its way through there. I'm going to leave out the house. I think that would be a distraction in this lovely scene. Um, 
So anyway, we've got our basics. Now, the next thing I'm going to start looking at when we go on to a little, it's going to be a combination underpainting value study, okay? And the reason that I do that, I'm going to do a complementary underpainting, which means it's just the opposites of the colors in the scene. We've got a lot of greens in these grasses, so the complements of green are going to be opposite on the color wheel. They're going to be more like a red violet, pinky red violet, and, uh, and reds in general. Um, and that's going to create vibrancy in the painting to use those as an underpainting. Some of that will kind of peek through. But the next thing I'm doing is not just getting a, a complimentary nice color underneath, is I'm beginning to focus on values. The things we want to determine before we even start is first, where's your light source? Okay, um, it looks like the sun's going down behind these trees. Um, but actually, I'm seeing the sun right here. Here we go. You see that right there? And I'm seeing this, there, we're gonna have lights on these grasses, okay, hitting the tops of these, all right? We're gonna have shadow area behind these trees because the sun's back here, and we're gonna have reflections on the water in here. You see the little reflection in here? So there's our light source. Now we want to focus on value, okay? A good way to do that is to squint your eyes. This photo is already so dark on my iPad, I can kind of see where the lights and darks are. Easy peasy, the sky is the lightest, okay? We've got some light areas in these grasses. Back here is lighter, okay? The sun's coming and it's hitting in here. These actually, usually you get warmer grasses in the foreground, but these look a little cooler. It's like uh, there's a shadow on this side, okay? Warmer on the tops of these grasses, um, lighter value. And of course, we've got lighter values in the water. The water's darker over here, but we've got some pretty light values in here and a little bit of reflection of the light here, okay? So we've got a general idea of the values there, and uh, that's my focus in laying down the color. So what I'm gonna do now is, I said I was gonna use this, um, this beautiful kind of pinkish um, color. It's not coming off very good on my newsprint. I'll use it if it'll behave. <laughs> that's a nice middle value, okay? Let me get a, a lighter value. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna keep this all in the warm, family. Okay, there's a lighter. So I'm, I'm going to work on three values right now. I've got my middle. Let me see if I like this middle better. That's more of a red. This is more of a pink. I think I'm going to go with the red, okay? And then I'm going to go with a little bit of a darker value. And I may do a purple. Uh, that's pretty dark. I don't think I want that dark. And I think I want to stay more in the reds. Let me try this one. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we're getting that... Um, that family of warmth going on here to do as an underpainting. So right now, first, I'm gonna start on the darks, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and get in. I know these, these trees in the background are dark. And at this point, I'm just using the side of this pastel. This looks like it might have been a unison at one point. <laughs> and um, we wanna keep a nice little variety in the trees and how they grow. You don't want things to be samey, samey. I kind of got it right there, the little samey, samey thing. I don't like that. I'm going to make um, some adjustments in that when I carve out the sky. So we want um, not um, things looking consistent. We want a little inconsistency. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, I think I want to join those trees together there. Okay, there we go. That looks a little better. All these little things come in time too, so don't get frustrated or discouraged. Um, just keep practicing. Now, I'm just getting in some of these values that are darker in this background grasses where the water has carved it out. Now, I'm just using the edge of this pastel. And um, you learn finesse with these as you work. Some of the challenge with pastels, well, it's really just like brushwork or any medium, you have to learn to manipulate the tool, you know, and uh, if you uh, haven't used it, um, it's just like anything. You've got to just get better at it. Same with pencil work and um, anything you're using, really. Practice really does make perfect, so we do have to practice. Okay, now I've got some of these... These grasses here have darker values at the base, and all of this is laying a foundation. And I find that that's one of the things, you know, here on this channel and in our Facebook group, um, Monet Cafe, the reason that I even called it Monet Cafe was a couple reasons, is because um, I like a loose style, and that is what many artists are trying to get to. We have a tendency to wanna to start to draw every blade of grass, 
And then you look at other people's work that have that loose style and you're like, how do they do that? And so that's one of the keys to laying down a good foundation, a good loose foundation, is that it will create that painterly look, that nice painterly look. Now I've got some um, darks back in here too. Not quite as dark. I might lighten them up a little bit. Or like you see, I'm using a light touch right here. Okay, see that already doesn't look quite as dark with the light touch. Um, but back to the name Monet Cafe, um, another reason was not just because of the um, loose style. The cafe part is because I love coffee. <laughs> Let me take a break. But that's not the only reason. It's because I like the casual atmosphere of a cafe and people just joining together like friends to learn something. So that's the reasoning behind my name, Monet Cafe, and not just that it rhymes. <laughs> All right, so I've got some of my darks in. Now I'm going to go ahead and start getting in my lighter values. This guy's actually going to be even lighter than that. I don't think I have a, a lighter pink, though. Let me check this real quick. Maybe this one's a little lighter. Actually, I think I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this little lavender. I know the sky's going to be light. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and get in this nice lavender tone. A lavender in a sky, it makes a nice um, value and color because um, it creates a mood of either early morning or late afternoon, okay? So see how I'm just getting that in there, and uh, it doesn't take much more than that. Now when I finally start getting the sky more, I notice the sky is lighter on this side and a little darker in the atmosphere, upper atmosphere there, okay? So there's my lightest light. I am going to have more light down here, but I don't want to add that just now. I want to get my dark down first, okay? And the only reason I did the light here is because that I can easily lay my other values on top of that. They're not going to be a whole lot darker or lighter. But always try to focus on getting your dark values down first. All right, on that note, now I'm going to go on to my mid values. And I'm squinting my eyes, okay? We got that darker. You can see this is um, more of a, a middle value. And I'm just going to start getting some of those in here. And we're going to lay those green grasses on top of these. Oh, and the other thing too is after you determine your um, light source, um, then you want to determine your values, then you work on big shapes, okay? You focus on shapes, like I was saying before, rather than what the thing is. And so that's all this is right now, is I'm working on those big shapes. All right, now... We've got our, where's my middle value? I mean, my lighter value. Here we go. This value, those other grasses in the back, remember I said they were lighter? That's why I'm using this little bit of a lighter here. All right, and I am not going to do a water underpainting with this. Sometimes I will take it and I will um, use alcohol or water and I'll literally paint this, and I'm careful so that it doesn't bleed all over the place. A little bit of running and bleeding is okay, but um, you don't wanna do that everywhere. But in this case, I'm just gonna blend it a little bit with a piece of pipe foam insulation, and now we know from a, a beautiful artist friend of mine that we can also use um, a pool noodle. <laughs> if you haven't been on my channel before, you're probably right now thinking, what the heck is she talking about? <laughs> So, I'm, I'm going to show you that in just a minute. All right. All right, and I'm using this lighter here because I can see in the water that this is indeed lighter on this side, okay? All right, so we're getting our basic values in here. All right, I'm going to add a little bit more of this one in here. I'm going to punch this up a little bit in some places. And directional strokes, that's another thing I was just talking about with a student, is um, you give a sense of mood um, with, it's almost like things are dancing. It's like nature is praising God is what I see. <laughs> and sometimes, I think that's why it's good to paint to music, is um, 
you feel that energy and you f almost feel where these grasses would be going. And it's, it's like a beautiful um, nature symphony. So that's one thing I like to try to accomplish in my work. Okay, so we're getting a pretty good idea for a value study in here. Um, and I think that's looking good. Okay, so we don't need a whole lot more than that. And then I'm going to take now, let me grab my little pipe foam insulation. And we're going to just blend it in. The reason for blending is just to get a little softness to it before I start laying down my other um, values and colors. Now I'm starting, I kind of cleaned this off. This is the pipe foam insulation I was talking about. Literally just buy it at a hardware store or use a piece of a pool noodle. I think the pool noodle actually worked pretty good with my friend the other day. She showed it to me. And, um, and mine's kind of dirty here. I'm looking for a spot that's not so dirty. That might be a little better. I just keep a piece of newsprint behind my uh, whatever I'm working on so that I can just make little scratches, clean off my pastels, make little notes, and uh, it's just handy for me. Okay, this is going to kind of get covered up anyway. So we see that we just blended the sky in a little bit. Now I think I'll go ahead and go with these middle values since it's kind of clean um, now. Just blending these in a little bit creating that little softness. Okay, same thing here. Oh, I love this brightness right there. That's just so pretty. Now, you'll be able to see that this warmth underneath here is going to create um, just a nice glow. This water, I, I see a direction of the water kind of moving like that. So I want to keep my strokes in that direction. This is kind of flowing along here. And again, I'm doing this as part of that 30 and 30 challenge, 30 paintings in 30 days. And so my goal is to focus on doing these rather quickly. But I thought, hey, why not make this a lesson for all of you at the same time? So I'm probably spending more time on this than I would on some of the ones that I'll do. Okay, now I'm going to get in and get those background trees. You see how that already softened up those grasses. And we've got, you know, just a little bit of that feeling of what it is already with just that simple little bit of what we've already got here. It's just already looking like something. All right, an idea of these marsh grasses. All right, so there's our little value study with a complementary underpainting. And now, not applying any water, just blending it like that, we can get started laying down some of the final colors that we're gonna use. All right, now I'm gonna put on some music and paint and do what I said, which is kind of feel um, the spirituality um, that you can feel when creating art. I think that's why so many people um, and our, even our little Facebook group for Monet Cafe Art Group is such a success is because we're all enjoying the escape from some of the craziness in our world and some of the negativity and we feel that connection um, to our beautiful creation and our beautiful creator as we paint. So I'm going to do just that. I'm going to put on some music and paint. I may add some commentary on top of this, but I hope you enjoy this process.
Okay, so in an attempt to not overwork this, <laughs> I'm going to finish it up quickly and kind of leave it more as just a loose study like this. I don't want it to be fussy or too detailed, um, but I do need to do a couple of things. I wanted to point out um, the background trees. I had to lighten them up with almost just like a, a gentle little wash of a lighter or a, a, like a light to middle value blue. And um, it softened those trees up. And we have to remember trees in the distance are going to be blurry. Uh, we don't want the eye in the painting to be drawn to those background trees. Um, we just want them to enhance everything else. So that's why I, I softened them up a little bit. But I did have a question asked to me the other day about sky holes, okay? Um, a lot of times people will draw the individual limbs of trees or, or uh, leaves or bushes or whatever. And um, it's so much better if we draw them in mass as a shape, like I said before, mostly I put in my values as a shape, and then we carve them out later. And um, sometimes if we use the same value, this is the sky that I used here, um, down in the trees, it ends up, it looks too light. It looks almost like it shows up too much. It draws your eye to it too much because of the stark contrast of the value difference between the darker blue and the lighter sky. So it's usually a better idea to get a value that's a little darker. This one might be a little too dark, but it's all I have here right now. I don't want to get up <laughs> um, to do the carve out the sky holes in the trees. So I've done a little bit of that here, but you can see that now when we put those in, um, you don't want to get it up in the sky. I'll fix that in a minute. They um, are more subtle. Your eye is not as drawn to um, those marks in the trees as it would be if you had that really light value next to it. So, and especially down deep behind the trees and places too, usually the values darken a little bit. So, and it adds interest. But again, to not draw the eye right to those sky holes, um, use a little bit of a darker value. And you want to have some finesse with this. Um, you don't want to have them look so consistent. I've got a little consistency going on here a little bit. You want to vary it um, as nature does. Nature has beautiful harmony, but it has spontaneity too. So it's usually good to try to emulate that. So I'm going to play around with these sky holes a little bit in an attempt. Sometimes I'll just touch them um, to make them a little bit softer. Not much. We don't want to do a lot of blending with our fingers by any means. So thanks for joining me in this little fun painting today, and I hope you will come back soon. Please subscribe and feel free to comment, and I just am so excited to bring you another video hopefully soon. Thanks guys. Bye.